celebrate the spirit of humanity in the dawn of a new American era. In a season when many commemorate the birth of Christ, we commemorate our own genesis, the enlightenment of all humanity, a revelation of our nature as written in the annals of history, a gift from Lucifer, the light bringer, the morning star, and the rebel. We are Satanists. We engender moral, spiritual, and sexual freedom, personal independence, and insist upon personal choice in all things. We care for the significance of the individual spirit and personal moral responsibility. If you stand here today and embrace your nature, are free thinking, self-governed, and godless, you too are a Satanist in the eyes of many in your own community, including those who represent you in your government. We are also Americans. We are seeking collaborators, individuals for a visionary satanic alliance, leaders of the new American era. And it is time to awaken. Do you want to be part of a sleeping world? No. Do you want to gorge on the drug of the commonplace? No. Will you forever remain addicted to the oppressive traditions of a counterfeit morality? No. Well, we must tell those people who represent us. As we stand on the crossroads of history, let us confront the blind and self-righteous, the persecutors of thought and reason. Let us rise up in celebration of our satanic nature and cast our chains into the dust of hell. The word of God has been evoked time and time again to justify the opposition to civil rights movements, to squash women's liberation. We have to do more when women are denied access to reproductive health care and vilified as murderers. Yeah. Satanic America has heard your call to action. If religion is to lead in areas which have traditionally been left to a secular democracy, we will do our duty too to bring the insights of our satanic practice to the state house, to the courthouse, to schools, and of course, homes and businesses of America. Yes! Wherever and whenever diverse religious guidance is needed. All hail the new American era. An America that embraces our fellow neighbors with the integrity of their character rather than the God to whom they pray. An America where we stand to defend justice and honor for our brothers and sisters regardless of whom they call husband or wife and regardless of their personal bodily choices. <laughs> Comrades, we are just as powerful as those who work in this institution here. Those who wish to uphold the traditions of old feel us breathing down their necks. And we will continue to be the voice of reason to ensure that our America remains free and equal. All hail the eternal rebel within all of us. To liberty, humanity, and justice. To the satanic emancipator and end of repressive traditions. Hail Satan! And the third abomination that brings judgment in the Bible. The Bible calls the gods and the idols of the nations abomination. When a nation drives out God, it's never neutral. It always brings in other gods. So as we've driven God out, this thing just appeared this August in New York City after the Supreme Court ruled. On the Empire State Building is the projection of a false and foreign god. It is the, probably the, the largest image of a false god in the history of man. That's the Hindu god Kali. This god is the god of darkness. Kali is also the god of death and destruction here over New York City. I believe a great shaking is coming. We are racing. We are racing to judgment.
Breaking tonight, here we go again. Another mass Breaking shooting. Tonight after hearing that 10 people were shot dead, seven wounded by yet another deranged oh, gunman. A deadly shooting on a college campus in Sacramento. The gunman who opened fire at a community college in Oregon. Virginia, a deadly shooting that happened in the middle of a television now, three live people show. people are dead and nine others wounded following a shooting spree in Lafayette, Louisiana. They seem to be coming closer and closer together. Mass shootings continue. 12 dead in Washington, D.C. at a Navy facility. Nine dead at a church in Charleston. A mass shooting in California, killing 14 people. The shooting epidemic that has struck the United States. There have been 355 mass shootings in the 336 days of 2015. That's more than one a day. Think about this. In Barack Obama's second term in office, not once has a calendar week gone by, Sunday to Saturday, without at least one mass shooting in this country. Not once. That's America. Somehow this has become routine. The reporting is routine. My response here at this podium ends up being routine. The conversation in the aftermath of it, we've become numb to this. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order when we are successful, and we will be. We have a real chance at this new world order. We are in a situation to where we are going to be dealing with mass murder. And they're trying to implement gun control in the face of mass murder. Now, you know, it's illegal to murder people. So if, if a murderer is going to murder you, do you think anybody's gun control law is going to affect him in any way whatsoever? No, only law-abiding citizens. They're the only ones that's going to be affected by it. Just in the last few days, all over this country, sheriffs and police chiefs in these cities are coming out and telling people, arm yourselves. Now, the reason they're telling you to arm yourself is because they know there are millions of people in this country carrying weapons, and they're not one bit worried about it. You know why? They're law-abiding citizens. Just because you got a gun strapped to your side doesn't mean that you become a criminal. So what's the point of all of this? The point of it is very simple. This country along with the rest of the world is being prepared for an Armageddon where we will definitely have a confrontation and in this confrontation they're going to eat your rights away from you they're going to take them away from you and they're going to prepare you for a dictator who's going to rule this world and he's called the Antichrist this iron teeth this little horn is coming and in order for him to take America, he's got to take America's freedoms away from them. And the first freedom that they're taking away from you and already have is your freedom of speech. Political correctness is killing us. And freedom of speech is the most precious freedom of all of them. Lose it and all the rest of them don't matter. Breaking news from the White House. President Obama intends to tighten gun sales without the approval of Congress. The war on terror is a total fraud. We live in a country that's changed drastically. Drastically. The people pulling the strings in this country, they want to destroy the very foundation and base of America so they can remake it. This is not something that's going to come down the road, folks. This is where you're living right now. A new world order. Such is a world worthy of our struggle and worthy of our children's future for all mankind. All this is being orchestrated. There is a Luciferian hierarchy. We, we all know that. It's in your case. That's who they worship, the God of this world. We now know the name of the uh, suspect who is deceased. That's him right there. His name is Micah Johnson. We don't know much more about him. He told the police that he was angry. He was angry about Black Lives Matter. He was 
angry at white people, upset at white people, and wanted to kill white people. Specifically, he wanted to kill white officers. The number of incidents turned violent late this afternoon. A limousine was set on fire downtown. Smoke could be seen for blocks away. And protesters hurled trash cans, flash bombs, and objects at police who used pepper spray in return. By this evening, at least 217 people were arrested. Six police officers were injured. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, oh. In another, protesters shut down part of a major highway near the Capitol. Protests today also occurred well beyond Washington, from marches in Denver to across San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge and around the world. In London, demonstrators unfurled banners from bridges with messages for the new president, among them to build bridges, not walls. In Tokyo, hundreds of people, most of them women, marched through the night streets in protest of Mr. Trump's presidency. A growing secessionist movement in the nation's biggest state got a kickstart after Tuesday's presidential election. Yes, California is pushing for California to secede and become a separate country. The group staged a day-long informational session Wednesday outside the state capitol in Sacramento. Discussion of the idea exploded Wednesday on Twitter. Tweets with the hashtag CalExit rolled in at 100 per minute all day. Many were often paired with the hashtag NotMyPresident in reference to Donald Trump's election. Um, our lives begin to end the day. We become silent about the things that matter. If, if we don't fight, who's going to fight for us? People had to die for freedom where we're at today. We can't just do rallies. We have to fight back. There will be casualties on both sides. There will be because people have to die to make a change in this world. people gathered outside Trump Tower. Thousands also took to the streets in Oakland, California, expressing disapproval for President-elect Donald Trump. And the same drama unfolding in Philadelphia, where demonstrators shouted anti-Trump slogans. That's right. That's just in this country. Meanwhile, several self-proclaimed anarchists are... And I 
I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And behold, a pale, behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was Death. We are fundamentally transforming the United States of America. We are not headed towards some humanly engineered utopia. We are not on the way to an age of peace and tranquility. One of America's biggest cities sinking into chaos. Tonight, we have witnessed lawlessness and chaos on the streets as the violence escalates despite we calls from Baltimore, where the governor of Maryland has declared a state of emergency. This is a grieving family that deserves answers for their son. Together, we united. And what our Lord says about the future is horrendous. According to the Lord Jesus, the future for this world and its inhabitants is very, very tragic. We need to realize how close this clock is to getting toward the midnight hour. And I think that's why for our sake, for the sake of our family, for our nation, we need to cry out to a holy God. Mm -hmm. um, this is coming faster than anyone can see. I know I, I worked very hard on the Intelligence Committee to try and keep up with what was happening in the world. It got to such a crescendo, I could hardly keep up with it anymore. Mm -hmm. The events have mm -hmm. picked up such a pace and they're going to continue. It's just like the Bible forewarned that it, the, in the last days it will be like the beginning of birth pains. In my opinion, we are far beyond the beginning of birth pains. We're moving far down into the process. For women who are listening to this show mm -hmm. today, you know what I'm talking about what it's like to deliver a baby at the very beginning stage and then at the very end before the baby is born. All I can tell you is a mom who has given birth to five babies. The birth pangs are very close together. They're very intense now and we are literally watching month by month the speed move up to a level we've never seen before with these events. And that's why the best thing that we can do is have churches and pastors explain our times. Believers need to get our lives right with God. And then we intercede. We intercede and intercede. And then, not despair, prophets said, we look to the future. We long to see those days and live in those days. Why? Because it's the return of a soon and coming king. Jesus Christ is coming back. We, in our lifetimes, potentially could see Jesus Christ returning to earth. This is one of the most exciting times in history. We need to be exactly watching the tenor of the times, be observing, and look up our redemption draw off night. These are wonderful times, but we see the destruction, but this is the destruction that was foretold. I warn you, we are in, we are in very dangerous times. We are living in biblical times. The message from this small independent republic to the entire world is one of dignity and freedom and tolerance, liberty, fraternity, egalité. We 
are now at the place to where you better have your house in order. Absolutely, we are really in a state ISIS, of crisis. the most brutally uh, violent terror group in modern history. Storms. This is an organization that has an apocalyptic end of days strategic vision. It is now our generation's task to carry on. An 8.5 magnitude earthquake has struck. Our change. journey is not complete until our gay brothers and sisters are treated like anyone else. This under is the For the second time in less than three weeks, Nepal has been rocked by another major earthquake. Geologists say there's been more seismic activity over the last seven months than over the last four decades. It's the frequency of these shocks that has the public as well as scientists puzzled. 911, what's the emergency? Yeah, there's a baby in our garbage can. This is 2015 when women are ruling the world. And so much crime going on that they really can't uh, control it. So we, have we lost our moral compass or are we just more aware of it now? Let me ask you something. Are your parents okay with you being here? Oh, my parents. Oh, my parents. Oh. This is modern day Babylon. Good evening, godless sodomites. Never before in the history of this country have so many corrupting influences descended upon children at one time. Kneel before your god, Babylon! There's been a lot of buzz over the last few weeks about strange sounds being heard in the atmosphere. And we start with some breaking news this hour. People in the Urals in Russia have seen burning objects raining down from the sky after a meteorite exploded about Earth. A terrible mystery ripping the world right now. Birds, fish, and all kinds of creatures just dropping dead in huge numbers for what seems like no reason. It's the latest in a series of unexplained sudden death incidents. The events have sparked a media frenzy with doomsday speculators saying it hails the end of the world. 165 tornadoes in 24 hours. Now 11 earthquakes in just the last 24 hours. And of course, the new concern over what's causing this. Could this be the start of something bigger? Experiencing one of the worst floods in the past 70 years. The flooding has reached biblical proportions. A massive tornado at least two miles wide. Scientists left baffled. Tonight with breaking news. The death toll is about to rise. So there's a lot of changes, geological and seismic changes that are going on. Increase of earthquakes. According to the United States and geological surveys, the rate of earthquakes and the frequency of earthquakes has increased and found the current trend was out of the ordinary. You see this is happening in multiple areas. What's going on? An increase in earthquakes. Scientists. This is something that we're seeing in the an earthquake that's so massive. And as technology has revolutionized our ability to communicate with each other, it's also allowed us to celebrate ourselves through boastful tweets, humble brags, status updates, and photos. Narcissistic traits have been rising at the same rate as obesity. It's about you. We're breeding a selfie nation. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram may all be contributing to a generation of self-absorbed, self-promoting, self-involved oversharers. It's about you. What does that say about us? Look at me. Look at me. Selfie obsession is now reaching new heights. Based on their observations, the members of the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists, Science and Security Board find conditions in the world to be so threatening that they are moving the hands of the doomsday clock two minutes closer to midnight. It is now three minutes to midnight. Today, unchecked climate change and a nuclear arms race pose extraordinary and undeniable threats to the continued existence of humanity. And world leaders have failed to act with the speed or on the scale required to protect citizens from potential catastrophe. What's happening on planet Earth is definitely not business as usual. The question is about whether this is all a sign of the apocalypse. show millennials are less religious than their parents ever were and that's a cause for concern among many of America's leaders. Our White House correspondent Jennifer Wishon takes a look at what it all means.
despite our Judeo-Christian roots, fewer Americans are identifying as Christians, while the number of Americans with no religion is growing at a record pace. Pew Research first surveyed more than 35,000 Americans about their religious views in 2007, then repeated the study seven years later. During that time, those who call themselves Christians dropped nearly 8%, driven by declines among mainline Protestant and Catholic congregations. Non-Christian faiths inched up ever so slightly, just over 1%. At the same time, though, Americans who say they're atheist, agnostic, or so-called religious nuns jumped by more than 6%, making the nuns now nearly 23% the fall of Christianity in America. According to a new Newsweek poll, 62% of Americans consider the United States a Christian nation. That's down from 69% during the tail end of the Bush presidency last year. And a whopping 68% say religion is losing its influence in America. Yourself a person of faith, but do you really know God? The Pew Research Center found that most Americans failed a quiz asking some of the most basic questions about religion. And atheists and agnostics did better than Catholics and evangelicals. In 1979, nearly 5.5 million people went to church on a Sunday. In 1989, that had fallen by a million. By 1998, the figure was down to 3.7 million. And by 2005, just over 3 million were attending church. That's a fall of 40%. If the decline continues at this rate, it's estimated that by 2020, there will be just 2.3 million, less than 5% of the population. In France, as in much of Europe, only 5% go to church on a weekly basis, and most of them are the elderly. Only 10% think religion is very important. For all Europeans, that figure is only 21%. Journalist Richard Miniter. As an American living in Europe, when you tell Europeans that you go to church on Sunday, they look at you like a museum piece, something strange. Donald Trump just gave Kim Jong-un devastating news. This could change the world as we know it. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson said the U.S. would consider military action against the country of North Korea. North Korea already possesses up to 20 nuclear bombs, with the nuclear material to build many more. All the people in Manhattan would be killed immediately, and the city would burn down to ashes. His country would use its nuclear weapons against the aggressors, quote, in a merciless manner. Intelligence analysis now confirms North Korea's ballistic missile launch last week was a practice drill to test hitting a U.S. Marine base in Japan. The North fired four extended-range Scud rockets into the Sea of Japan. Two missile experts say the hypothetical target was U.S. Marine Corps Air Station Iwakuni. North Korea is revving up its people, holding anti-American rallies with thousands chanting anti-U.S. and South Korean rhetoric, its leaders promising to ready its rockets to settle accounts with the United States. The Washington Post reports the communist nation says all the people in Manhattan would be killed immediately and the city would burn down to ashes. Chaos in the heart of London today. Panicked crowds in the packed streets outside the Palace of Westminster. Tonight, the attack being treated as a terrorist incident that instantly paralyzed Britain's parliament. People fleeing as gunshots ring out. Police shouting at pedestrians to run. No, move yourself, go! This is a Fox News alert. It certainly looks like terrorism. And again, it is France, Nice, France. That's along the French Riviera. The news is breaking, but what we can tell you right now is the death toll is now 73 and expected to rise. Now, it all started when a large truck plowed into a crowd of people celebrating a national holiday, Bastille Day, in France. In addition to the truck, there are also reports of gunfire, and the question on everyone's mind, was this another terror attack in France? ISIS claiming responsibility for those attacks, which killed at least 31 people and injured nearly 200 more. And we're just getting some reports from European media that police are searching for three suspects, two directly involved and one accomplice. 
Good morning, everyone. This is breaking right now. Police say that as many as 20 people are dead. 20 people dead and at least 42 people taken to various hospitals in the Orlando, Florida area. Police say a gunman opened fire at the Pulse nightclub around 2 a.m. Eastern, exchanging fire with officers at the club. A one-ton, nine-foot bronze statue of the satanic symbol Baphomet. The statue was meant for the state capitol in Oklahoma City until its Supreme Court banned a monument of the Ten Commandments. The Satanic Temple says it supports separation of church and state. It now wants to erect the figure outside the State House in Arkansas, where a Ten Commandments monument is planned. All history has been a battle against the effects of sin and the effects of the curse on humanity and on creation brought by God because of sin. It is a, a sign of tremendous change. It's a sign that life history patterns are actually changing pretty much before our eyes. There's no country that has been exempted from very strange weather. Jesus said, I'm going to die, I'm going to rise again, I'm going to pay the penalty for sin, and then I'm going away. And while I'm gone, things will get worse. Are you ready to piss off some Christians? Yeah! I'm Jesus f***ing Christ! Yeah! It seems like the world we're living in is slipping out of control. Humanity doesn't need God. Oh, well, I like to think of myself as a good person. Well, we all like to think of ourselves as good people. Atheists do, Jews do, Muslims do. So when you meet somebody who claims to be Christian, mock them, ridicule them. In public. And he bearing his cross. God paid the price for your sin. Pains like Jesus. You're supposed to look at that figure of Christ on the cross and think, how could a man suffer like that and forgive? Not Romans are pussy, he still has his eyes. <laughs> Jesus Christ crying out on the cross, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That reaches the heart of men and says to us there, the ultimate separation, the ultimate condemnation, the ultimate fact that God had turned his back on his son because he couldn't look upon sin. <laughs> Tonight, France has closed its borders with the rest of Europe. Seven locations across Paris became scenes of terror. 127 people have lost their lives in a coordinated series of shootings, explosions, and hostage takings. The attack is the worst to strike France since the Second World War. The French president has declared a state of emergency and has sealed the country's have borders. Been killed in multiple shootings and bomb attacks across Paris. 200 people have been injured. Witnesses have described how several gunmen shouted Allah Akbar, God is greatest in Arabic before the group opened fire, shooting members of the audience one by one. Hundreds of people who had been gathered at vigils at Place de la République and the Carillion Café dispersed suddenly on Sunday evening as sudden bangs scared the crowds. As unexplained explosive noises sounded, people suddenly began running away from the vigils, which were being held at one of the locations where gunmen opened fire on Friday.
bit further south, diners at a restaurant also dispersed suddenly, breaking glasses and turning over tables after they said they heard loud noises. More than a million people, men, women and children, trekked across deserts, risked their lives crossing the Mediterranean Sea, hoping for a new life in Europe. The refugee and migrant crisis. People die and they're dead. In Syria. Jets launched airstrikes on the divided city of Aleppo. In Yemen, devastation has become the norm. No, another choice. It's a war. You want to go to Europe? Many of the migrants here are not happy they are returning to Libya. Here comes another boat. No matter what triggers this mass movement of people the war in Syria or Germany's implied promise to take all of them in or the false promises of the people smugglers. No matter what started it, no matter what perpetuates it, there is no easy way of stopping it. They have given up everything to make this journey and they say there will be no going back. Your family got across and you are stuck here? <laughs> Walking to Germany. It's a very, very long way. These people have been here for more than two hours in a standoff. We don't know, they stop us here. This international mass migration is unstoppable. The crisis threatening to overwhelm this continent. It is not quite on a biblical scale, but an exodus it certainly is. Migrants who've been trapped at the railway station in Budapest now deciding to walk the hundreds of miles to Germany and what they see as the promised land. Security forces overwhelmed as asylum seekers push ahead into Western Europe. The police have completely lost control here. The refugees and migrants have broken through the line and this is happening in the European Union. This is different because we don't really have a Syria to talk to. We don't have data on the other end to, to verify the veracity of a refugee's claims coming here. When we know that ISIL is already telling us that they are trying to infiltrate the refugee population, don't you think that common sense dictates that we should take a pause and get this right? Something else that Muslim immigration appears to have brought to Norway is what some here call a rape epidemic. Recent police statistics show 100% of assault rapes between strangers were committed by immigrant non-Western males. But the rape problem is primarily Muslim men raping non-Muslim women. We lead the world in facing down a threat to decency and humanity. What is at stake is more in one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order, where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind. Peace and security, freedom and the rule of law. Such is a world worthy of our struggle and worthy of our children's future for all mankind. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows.
on the edge of a climatic abyss. We're going straight to Paris where the Prime Minister is speaking at the climate conference. We'd have to say it was all too difficult. And they would reply, well, what was so difficult? What was it that was so difficult when the earth was in peril? When the sea levels were rising in 2015, when the sea levels were rising, when crops were failing, when deserts were expanding, what was it that was so difficult? More than 300 twisters strike an area stretching from Texas to New York. This is something I have never seen before. It is the largest outbreak ever recorded. A An massive earthquake. Magnitude earthquake. earthquake. Has Scientists are saying they've never seen anything like this. Once in a generation, storms a Godzilla event. I saw nature having labor pains, supernatural signs and changes that can't be explained by men. Worldwide disasters that we're witnessing right now, I see as labor pains in nature, which are going to become more and more frequent and more intense the closer we get to the birth of the kingdom of God. They wanted to know when the earth was coming to an end as we know it, the age as we understand it, the times as we perceive them. They wanted to know what was going to happen. Earthquakes in diverse places, earthquakes, they have increased in number and they have increased in intensity. They are increasing as I stand before you this morning. Earthquakes are definitely increasing. Queensland's been shaken by another two earthquakes today. The latest hit about 2.45 p.m. Eastern and was a magnitude 5.1. Earlier in the afternoon, a 5.7 magnitude jolt struck in the same area two days ago. A 5.3 magnitude earthquake hit off the Fraser Coast. So uh, it's certainly a large, large event. Uh, but this year there's been two in Queensland, unusually. Following a developing story in South America where a tsunami warning has now been issued after a massive earthquake, an 8.3 magnitude magnitude quake that hit off the coast of northern Chile. Witnesses say that the quake shook buildings as far inland as the capital city of Santiago. The quake struck at a depth of 5.2 miles and the U.S. Geological Survey says hazardous tsunami waves from the quake are possible. They're looking at the coasts of Chile, Peru and Hawaii. An 8.3 magnitude quake is of course extremely big and rare. A massive 7.5 earthquake in northern Afghanistan shook buildings from Kabul to Delhi. The quake struck northern Pakistan and Afghanistan, killing at least 300 people. Monday's initial quake of magnitude 7.5 was followed by seven aftershocks. Several hundred people wounded, with the death toll likely to rise. So the earth is still shaking, the ground is still shaking. There is a whole lot of shaking going on in Oklahoma. The Sooner State saw 850 earthquakes of magnitude 3 or greater this year. The trend is clear. Earthquakes are on the rise in Oklahoma because Oklahoma never used to have earthquakes. Now, in just the year 2015, more than 5,000 earthquakes have been recorded across Oklahoma. At 4.8, it wasn't the size of this quake so much as where it hit most densely populated part of the province. Felt over a very, very wide area. It's the strongest shaking uh, in this region for the past 15 years. This one, though, has people here thinking and talking about the big one. Listen carefully to me, folks. Listen carefully to me. You cannot believe what you hear. You cannot believe what you see. You cannot believe what you think you know, because we're living in a time of horrible deception. And that deception is everywhere. It's in the media, it's in the educational system, it's in the government, it's in the churches, it's throughout society. It permeates everything that has to do with what makes up American culture and the cultures of this world. The end of all things is at hand. The end is come. There are no surprises to God, and there are no surprises to those who understand what God has revealed. No man knows the day or the hour, as the scripture says, but we do know the season we're living in. It is obvious that Christ is coming soon for his church. And what our Lord says about the future is horrendous. We are not headed towards some humanly engineered utopia. We are not on the way to an age of peace and tranquility. According to the Lord Jesus, the future for this world and its inhabitants is very, very tragic. Now, Paul the Apostle describes the condition of the world in its final days 
as one in which people are preoccupied with themselves. Self-focus, lovers of self, he calls it, disobedient, unthankful, unholy. There'll be a breakdown of natural family affection. Society as we've known it for thousands of years will begin to unravel rather quickly in the last days. Alarmingly so, and the godly will be shocked. The climate is changing faster than our efforts to address it. No nation is immune. The alarm bells keep ringing. But take heed, behold, I have told you everything in advance. This is prophetic. Jesus gives a picture of history to come. There's one issue that will define the contours of this century more dramatically than any other, and that is the urgent and growing threat of a changing climate. This once distant threat has moved firmly into the present. Wars, rumors of wars. Terrorism, the prospect of wars. For nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Instability, racial and ethnic tensions, conflict. Earthquakes in various places. More frequent extreme weather events. Various kinds of famines, diseases, disasters, terrors, fires. In our West, wildfire season now stretches most of the year. Worldwide, this summer was the hottest ever recorded. Heat, cold floods. Floods along our eastern coast. The city of Miami now floods at high tide. Hurricanes, tornadoes. A hurricane left parts of this great city dark and underwater. Drought. In our heartland, farms have been parched by the worst drought in generations. Even so, you too, when you see these things happening, recognize that he is near right at the door. We are the first generation to feel the impact of climate change and the last generation that can do something about it. We are the first generation to feel the impact of climate change and the last generation that can do something about it. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Everything has changed, not like it used to be. We believe that there are events happening on the planet right now mm -hmm. which talk and show us in, in graphic terms that the supernatural is, in fact, manifesting. We read in the Bible uh, several places in the New Testament that tell, about, uh, tell us about signs in the sun, moon, and stars mm -hmm. as we uh, reach that critical period mm -hmm. prior to Christ's return. Jesus mentioned earthquakes in diverse places as a sign. And, and what's, let me add to that. What's amazing about this is when, when Yeshua Jesus speaks that prophecy almost 2,000 years ago, there's no way to track any of this before the modern era. In other words, if I lived in London, let's say, 300 years ago, and there was an earthquake in Oklahoma, I wouldn't know about it. That's now, true. my USGS and my disaster alerts and everything else gives me anything over 6.0. I, I, it's right there. So for the first time in all of history, we are linked and synced up together. We can track the birth pangs. God wants us to know the season because Jesus is returning in wrath and God does not wish that any should perish. First, the signs of nature and the weather. Jesus said, and there will be great earthquakes and in various places, plagues and famines, and there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. Jesus added that these signs would be like birth pains. That means that the closer we get to his return, the signs will increase in two ways. They will become more frequent and more intense, like birth pains. More frequent, more intense. More frequent earthquakes, more intense. More tornadoes, more intense. Scientists are growing increasingly concerned. We have seen changes in extremes of weather. The current changes are very unusual and cannot be explained simply as part of any natural cycle. In the last century, our climate has started to change rapidly. This isn't thought to be just a temporary blip in the system. The evidence points to a long-term change in our climate, which is happening at an unusual rate. April the 19th is also the exact day when a very important, important occult festival related to the worship of Baal or Baal begins. April the 19th is the first day of a 13-day period of time known as the blood sacrifice of the beast that culminates on the high occult holy day of Beltane on May the 1st. And it has been described as the Illuminati's second most sacred holiday. We have indeed witnessed a disturbing series of blood sacrifices 
during the second half of April in recent years, and many people wonder if there's a connection. April 19th is also known as the Feast of Moloch. If you're not familiar with Moloch or Molech, it is an ancient Canaanite god that is repeatedly denounced in the Old Testament. Child sacrifice was a key feature of the worship of Moloch. One sign, one particular sign, and that sign could be summed up in this word, convergence. For the first time ever in history, all of the signs are coming together. All of them are converging. Yes, we are living in the season of the Lord's return.